year, 10% of construction workers are injured on the job site. According to the Census of Fatal Occupational Injuries in 2017 alone, 5,147 construction workers died on the job. When an accident leaves a construction worker incapacitated, they and their families lose the financial security they once had. A good attorney is needed to make sure that the injured parties are compensated to the highest level because most of the time they will never be able to work again. And there is only one bite of the apple when it comes to fighting for compensation in court. With me to discuss what to do if you or a loved one is involved in a construction accident is Spar and Bernstein's personal injury attorney, Mosh the Bulldozer Baruch. Hello, Mosh. How you doing, Brad? Mr. Bulldozer, how are you? I'm great. How You've are you? You've been called that many times, right? That's right. Yes. Where did you get that name? From um, an adversary, I think, right? I, I believe so. It was a deposition, I think, when uh, I was so aggressive. He's like, look, you're like a freaking bulldozer. You just want to skip through this <laughs> deposition really quickly. <laughs> so, any event, so any event, and it's stuck. So, you know, everyone at Smart Burns gets a name, even the attorneys, you know, we call you the bulldozer. Let me ask you a question. We're talking about construction accidents here. If you're at a construction site and you get hurt, on the job what do you do if you're hurt on the construction site the first thing I recommend somebody do is stay put don't move get your phone out call 911 get medical attention that's you, the first thing you need to do you do. know how many people say the first thing I do is to call the safety foreman that's what they tell them to do because they're interested parties you should never do that because those people have adverse interests against you the site safety foreman actually is employed by the insurance, the insurance company. company that's right they're looking to limit their liability not give you what you're fully owed correct so the site safety foreman is actually against you not for you and I think the reason not only do you want to get Get medical attention and the quickest way to get medical attention is to call an ambulance not have your colleagues drive you to the hospital but just as important if you're going to have a lawsuit and if you're going to be injured and not going to be able to work again you're going to want to have a lawsuit because you're never going to be able to earn an income again you have to demonstrate and document what happened exactly so if you call an ambulance there is no question that the accident happened on the job I've right. seen in my career, and I'm sure you have as well, many instances where the colleagues drove somebody to the hospital and then the insurance company or the construction company would say they never got injured on our site. We have no record of it. That's a good point. So what happens is if you have one of your colleagues take you to the hospital after an incident occurs, now the facts have changed. Now everybody can move things around at where the incident occurred. So if a ladder fell, for example, the ladder can be picked up and put away somewhere. And now you don't have the actual ladder to take pictures of or to have an EMS personnel put notes in and take notes about what happened. So you're right, you should always, always stay where you are, call uh, for help, uh, medical attention, and get everything documented. Right, so really the two things, when you say, ouch, I'm hurt, I'm really hurt, is get an ambulance, because the ambulance is gonna document that the accident happened, and they're also gonna be the quickest way to get medical attention. And two, if you're able to, everyone has a cell phone now, Mosh, right? Oh yeah. If you're able to, only if you're able to, take out your phone and take pictures or video of everything around you, who's there, what happened, what fell, take pictures, as many pictures as you can, because you have to document that that accident happened and how it happened. And if you're too injured, but you're able to talk, ask one of your colleagues to do it for you. Absolutely. And another thing, Brad, uh, a lot of people, we get a lot of these phone calls, they get injured that moment, but they don't seek medical attention until the following morning. Why? Because they want to show their colleagues that they're, they're big, tough guys. But what they don't understand is that the more time you wait to get medical attention for your pain, even if it's just a sprain, get medical attention that instant moment. Because the longer you wait to get medical attention, you're delaying your case and you might be adversely affecting it. But not case. only yeah, you're, you're adversely affecting it because now you're leaving a question about were you injured at that moment or was there something else that happened in the preceding days. Maybe you fell on the street, maybe you fell at home, that all of a sudden now one week later you're complaining you're in pain. Exactly. So you get medical attention immediately if you're in pain because you want to document that that pain, that injury, is a result of this accident that you took pictures of, your colleagues took pictures of, and that the ambulance came to the scene and saw you there lying in pain and treated you as a result of 
the accident that happened. Mosh, quickly, before we leave, because people always like to know about our Spar and Bernstein success stories. Tell us about one of your great success stories in, in a construction accident case. Sure. Three or four months ago, we settled a case where one of our clients was on a scaffold. Mm -hmm. He was uh, putting sheetrock on a scaffold. And the scaffold, for reasons that are irrelevant to us, for the purposes of the case, it fell. And when the scaffold fell, our client fell with it. Uh, and he fractured his vertebrae. He uh, had a subsequent fusion surgery, which fuses the two vertebrae together, the uninjured uh, vertebrae. And what happened was we filed a lawsuit. We sued the owners of the premises. We sued the contractors, the subcontractors. So we proved that he couldn't ever work as a construction laborer again. We got him almost $6 million, Brad. Wow. Yep. That's an amazing result. $6 million. Uh, if anybody is ever injured in a construction accident, call Mosh the bulldozer, Baruch. We call him the bulldozer. <laughs> they call me Uncle Brad. So you're the... <laughs> You're the bulldozer, but more importantly, if you know anybody who works at a construction site, you never know when an accident happens, and when an accident happens, the last thing you need to worry about is who you're going to call. So just save our telephone number in your phone, God forbid you or a loved one gets injured. 1-800-529-5465, that's 1-800-529-5465. Save that number in your phone, and God forbid anybody ever gets injured uh, that you know at a construction site, you can call us immediately because what you've learned today is it's the most important thing is to get treatment immediately and have your lawyer on the case immediately. Thanks, Mosh. Great job. Sure. Thanks, Brad. Prior successful results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.